The Difference Between Formal and Non-Formal Language When approaching formal and non-formal language it's imperative to keep in mind that people are by nature designed to be different, therefore arguing which is more important is a waste of time. Based on cultural upbringing and life experience both play an important role in regards to teaching a student. Formal and informal language are used daily, though, both habituate different societal spaces and their ratios change. Either can bleed into each other when language becomes really interesting. The use of formal language. Defined simply formal language avoids I, we, and colloquialisms. It would normally be found in the boardroom of a Monsanto-like company or during an exceedingly awkward first date. Formal language is not personal and therefore will usually be used less often in day-to-day -day interactions with people of familiarity and more often for business, academic purposes. In my anecdotal experience with formal language it is used in first encounters and in circumstances where respect is required to be shown. For example, speaking with a girlfriend's parents or introducing one's self to Bill Gates. Formal would be a lot more important to a class of businessmen than to a casual learner. When teaching, starting with formal language provides a more grammatically structured baseline. Most importantly, the cultural applications and uses of both formal and informal language should be distinguished when embarking on a new language, but I'll delve into that in the finally. The use of non-formal language. Non-formal language is personal and spontaneous and uses both contractions and first-person pronouns or slang. This is where depth, creativity, and familiarity come into play and command of its uses shows fluidity in the language. The challenging part mastering and teaching informal language is due to its shapelessness, it can take many different forms and vary widely between even cities and neighborhoods. People will find themselves communicating in informal language when in the company of friends and family, texting, and even in some business correspondence. Learning and teaching informal language can be difficult because it tends to disagree with grammar and logical meanings. The modern day group messenger chat between friends really embodies the essence of informal language. Things to keep in mind As mentioned above, the daily ratio of formal to informal language varies vastly in regards the culture where the language is spoken. As native English speakers teaching peoples from different ethnic backgrounds and cultures it is key to remember how uncomfortable our friendly language can make certain students. In the same vein when preparing to teach a class it could be a good indicator of which would be better suited for the class initially. Teaching a class of students from a more conservative background it might be best to address formal language first. As anyone who has attempted to learn a foreign language can tell you, a mishap in this department can lead to some interesting and eye-opening experiences. For example, in my journey to becoming fluent in Spanish I had to reevaluate my usage of to and us did after a few awkward encounters with certain professors at a university. A difference I had not previously given much thought. To summarize, the main difference between formal and informal language is the difference between a top-down or a bottom-up approach. Both meet to form a fluid well-rounded foreign speaker though how to reach that point will always be a mixed bag. Are you ready to teach English abroad? Speak with an ITTT advisor today to put together your personal plan for teaching English abroad. Send us an email or call us toll-free at 1-800-490-0531 to speak with an ITTT advisor today.